I recently came across this webcomic in my Twitter feed, and I kind of just wanted to make a couple comments about it, about the, the math that's shown there, the way math is interpreted, and also some of the interesting questions we can ask given the, the unusual uh, equations and so on that we see here. Uh, the first panel is elementary school. Um, I guess it's a very happy person. Uh, three apples, two apples, add them together, and you have five apples. Uh, it's very satisfying. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's something you can tangibly um, put right in front of you, and, and it makes very much sense. Then we skip over to middle school, and there's some problems in middle school, apparently with mathematics and also with English. Um, as am I supposed to add A and B? I think that's a question. Uh, this should be capitalized, and probably, you know, am I supposed to add A and B? Uh, he doesn't look very happy uh, at this equation here. Usually, I, I would think, I mean, there's a couple things we could do with this. I guess usually they would ask something like uh, find x or evaluate for x when, you know, A equals 1 and then maybe B equals 2. Or they might do something like, you know, solve for the variable um, A or B, and or B. They might ask to do one or the other. A um, little exercise in algebra and, and variables and so on. Or they might give you two and ask you to solve for the third, and any number of things. Um, then things start to get interesting uh, at high school. Um, we've got y equals, and then it's like some polynomial, 5x to the third minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 17. That's just a third order polynomial. All this divided by the square root of e to the x sine of 2x. And then we have a person here who is uh, very, very uh, frustrated, it seems. Um, there's actually a lot of interesting questions, I guess, that could come out of this. You know, domain and range. Um, are, are two that come to mind um, right off the bat. Um, you could also be asked to uh, take first and second derivatives and then sketch. So sketch using calc techniques. That's a C, not a G. Um, and there's all sorts of stuff. <coughs> and I actually took the liberty of graphing these functions. So uh, there's the polynomial, which I've graphed. see it's a third order polynomial and that's that oh I wrote 5x to the third 5x times 3 it should be 5x to the third that's why it looks like it's squared there we go uh, let me just zoom this back in using the magic of GeoGebra over here let me zoom this back in using the magic of GeoGebra why isn't it zooming back in standard view there we go um, we can also plot uh, the denominator. So we plotted the numerator before, now we've got the denominator. The denominator, we can see, obviously, is undefined from pi over 2 to pi, and then from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, and so on, because for those intervals, um, sine of 2x is negative, and ne negative under square root is not defined. So there's some interesting, you know, uh, finding the behavior of the function. And then here is the actual composition of the function which doesn't look terribly interesting right now, uh, but let's pull this down a little bit, zoom in a bit, and you can see how the function uh, kind of looks as we, as we zoom. Let's take this and move that over there. So it's got a pretty interesting shape. There's your negative e to the x uh, exponentially decreasing. Uh, there you can see all the asymptotes at intervals of, you know, uh, pi over 2 to pi and so on. So I guess that's a, a pretty interesting thing that you can do with the function and get a general idea of the shape. And the last one um, is at engineering school. Uh, when we have a student who has some red eye, which I totally understand. Uh, his face looks a little bit wrecked, uh, probably from so many late nights studying. And he's amazed to see uh, a number 2 in this entire equation, which I'm not going to bother reading off, um, but I did go and graph it. And what I did in my grapher was, um, I can't, it's, it's a four-dimensional function. The input is x, y, and z, and the output is some uh, g, which is a function of these three. And you can't plot that in three space because your input's a 3D coordinate and your output's a, the fourth coordinate. So what I did was I actually made g a variable a, 
and then I set it equal to this function. Actually, it's g of x, y, and z. And then I took it a step further, just to spite the comic, and just to drive everyone crazy, and I made this two an a, a constant that I can vary. So let's see what this looks like. And this is what it looks like. Uh, there it is. You can see graph 3D, and I have the whole thing graph. doesn't even fit. Um, and there's the variable a, and I can change a. And as I change a, you can see the function itself kind of shifting and changing and, and moving. And I can rotate this thing about in three space and have a look at it from all different perspectives. And you know, you can see it has some, uh, it, it's an interesting form. The domain of this thing is certainly would be fun to find. And I, and I challenge any uh, user to go ahead and tell me what the domain of this thing is. Um, so there's, you know, another value of A that looked interesting. There's another value of A and you can see this thing. Uh, and then just for the heck of it, like I said, I went and I made, uh, instead of 2 times natural log of z, I made it b. So now let me go and uh, make my b variable scrolling. And I'll keep everything else the same, but I'll change the, va the value of b. And you can see how changing the value of b, but keeping everything else the same, changes uh, the function as I, as I rotate and zoom. So it's an interesting comic. Um, I don't know where those last two equations would appear. Whoops, everything disappeared. Where they would appear in real life, um, in term, in like in physics or, or or modeling of any kind. But it's certainly an interesting exercise in domain and range and graphing. And with the technology available, it's perhaps a worthwhile exercise. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, find the domain of this uh, four-dimensional function. All right, take care.